Hi, welcome to my lab. Since first lockdown, I started to take care of plants in my work. My lab mom has got plenty of orchids there and I killed them all. <laughs> You're a monster! I don't have hand for orchids. I totally don't understand how to water them and to keep them pretty and alive. So I decided to make myself a new orchid which doesn't need water using this monster high Posea Reef doll. When I saw her for the first time, her body resembled me of orchid roots and I finally have skills to make this idea come to life. She's already bold, I did it to her in my ears mold making video, but still I am bringing her to my Murin Spa, where each doll is treated like a queen. Here in Murin Spa we offer everything what doll needs to look fabulous. We are starting from our royal decapitation. Followed by deep cleaning acetone face mask. Murin Spa. Everything for those who want a new start. Orchids has got characteristic and very flat flowers. I am going to recreate it with her hairstyle and the best material for this will be acrylic yarn since it is very soft. I prepared yarn as usual by cutting it to the pieces, detangling, knotting on the metal stick, brushing and fluttering with hair straightener. To give her hairstyle proper shape, I marked sections on her head, then I started to root border of each section, leaving empty inside to not overroot. Should I paint her scalp purple first? Yes! In middle of the rerouting, I decided to prepare a stem for her. Orchids has got multiple flowers on the stems and I want to mimic it by making her huge antenna out of the warbler thermoplastic. I heated up my warbler mistakes and formed a wand out of it, which then I cut to the proper length. After two weeks, when I finally finished rerouting, I squeezed to her neck whole generous amount of fabric glue and spread it with Q-tip to secure all hair plugs. I gave her body quick sand with sanding blocks and spray lower part of her body with brown paint using my airbrush. For her arms and torso I used dark green, but it turned out that I forgot to switch on my camera, so I don't have a footage. I also sprayed her neck with the same green to make her head part of her body. Her face got white base coat. I blushed her body with dark blue Mungio Soft Pastels. I pick up the blue because it stands out more than green. Right now it looks harsh, but sealing blends it with color underneath. This effect similar to Multiply feature in Photoshop. Next I did dark brown wash on the roots and green dry brushing to show this beautiful sculpt and give her some more dimension. To give her more elegant look I painted sculpted dots on her body gold. All of them. Two thousand years later. It took a while. One eternity later. But it was worth it. I don't want to hide all of this with fabric, so to cover her boobs I used golden leaf inspired by Susika. Let's leave body for now and do the face. I gave her a heavy pink blushing around her eyes using Moongia Soft Pastels. On the next layer I painted her molded eyes with white airbrush paint. 
Then I decided to splat some freckles on her face to mimic dots on some orchid flowers, but it's not so visible. So I gave her dotted eyebrows to make her look more interesting and painted freckles on her cheeks by hand. For her eyes, I used green paint to match her body. I made many touch-ups of her face off camera because Posea face mold is very defined, which makes so hard to reach every corner in proper angle with brush. The same day I was working on my summer girl repaint with Frankie as base, which has got way less defined eyes and it was so easy to shape her look as I wanted. I am happy with this face too because Posa is beautiful doll but in my imagination and concept art which you had chance to see in my Scarlet Queen video, she looks different. When I was satisfied with her face up, I removed protective cloth from her hair and added some matching baby hair to her forehead. I wanted to paint such detail for a very long time and I finally had opportunity to do this. Ok, now it's time for her hairstyle. When it comes to the back of her head, I want to keep it up and quite flat to show Posea's nice hairline. I braided each section, twist it to a mini bun and sew it to keep it in place. And thread tangled. Seriously, I didn't have any problems with two previews which I did off cam, but when I wanted to show how I did it, it trolled me. <laughs> When it comes to the front of her head, I straightened the bangs and cut them to the shape. At first I wanted to give her two rows of petals, but I hated the result, plus Orchid has got only one row of petals. Unfortunately, I lost some of the footage, but you will see the finished hairstyle later. Next, I took epoxy sculpt, mixed equal amount of part A and B, and sculpted three Orchid flowers. One big, second smaller and third teeny Orchid bud. When it cured, I prepared a mixture of silicone to cast the mold. Instruction said that I had to mix part A and B by wave, but I don't have scales in home and I don't want to go to the lab just for that, so I am able to give them by volume. I know that it is not proper, but trust me, I am a scientist. After stealing it carefully, I poured it over my little sculptures. And look, it worked! I removed molds from the containers and cut the opening on the back to take out the base.
Then I prepare dress. I mix two parts together in a one-to-one -one ratio, color it with airbrush paint and magenta mica powders and pour it to my mold. This patch turned out to be little on the gummy side, but I am very proud of myself since it is my very first try with epoxy resin. Off camera I prepared second set the same way. I sanded the backs of the flowers to remove residues from the casting. To make them shine again, I gave them layer of nail top coat. Right now I think that I should just use UV resin or glossy varnish. Next I painted them with pearly white and gold paint for some sparkle and covered them again with the top coat to seal the deal. Now it's time to return to the stem which I prepared some time ago. I heated Warbla to correct the shape and then I used Warbla pellet to attach the buds to the end of the stem. When it cooled down, I give the stem black base coat and painted it gold to match the design. Then I tried really hard to attach metal chains with super glue, but I ended up gluing my fingers. When I finally was able to put chains in the place, I positioned the flowers on the stem and glued them with UV resin. I recommend, it is way better for metal than any other glue. I only wish I had third hand. And this is what I got. I love the movement. It looks awesome except of this one flower which I glued backwards. I did leave it later. I glued two pins to the stem, punched it to the doll head and it immediately broke. Ouch. I didn't expect that. Stem is pretty heavy, so to get better stability I decided to hit the pin on the candle to punch the sucker inside. It turned out to be harder than I expected to put it evenly. I put it to the doll's head and protected the seam with more Warbla, with more Warbla pellets. I gently put her head on the body. And here she is. And I like her. Stem is so floppy that I need to keep her head to the side to keep it straight. I took it off and made a cut on her head. Then I cut the stem with the pins and just installed it to her head. It was that easy, so why I didn't make it like this from the beginning? I realized that she looked too plain, so I decided to add chains and rhinestones to dazzle her look.
Don't forget about the gloss on the eyes and lips and we are done! And here she is! I am very happy to show her to you. She was ready for almost two months now, but I had crazy time in my work recently and I didn't have time to edit her video. But luckily I am back in the business and more projects are coming soon. And now she can sit next to my bench and I don't need to worry to water her. And this is all for today. See you next time. Bye!